Catholic History Trek, a podcast exploring the Catholic past. Since the church was first established by Jesus some 2,000 years ago, it has faced persecution and martyrdom. As is said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Most of the 12 apostles were martyred, many of the first converts were martyred in various Roman persecutions, and ever since then, be it conquering Mohammedans, Japanese warlords, militant Protestants, pagan tribes, or in more recent times, anti-religious, secular, and communist revolutions, martyrdom has been a constant in the history of the church. Granted, it's not a steady stream, but waxes and wanes by location and era in time. But it is something that never seems to go away. Some have said that the 20th century saw more martyrs for the Christian faith than the previous 19 centuries combined. But one area where bloody martyrdom did not seem to be prevalent in the 20th century was the United States of America. Sure, there was plenty of bigotry and hatred of Catholicism, as Kevin and I covered in our episode on anti-Catholicism within America. But the United States was not like the USSR or China, where countless Christians were rounded up and martyred. But this does not mean that there were no Catholic martyrs on American soil. In fact, there were. And in this episode, I'll be trekking through the life of one such martyr in America, Father Leo Heinrichs. To understand the life of Father Heinrichs, we need to go back to when the German Empire was formed in 1870. When that happened, the predominantly Catholic southern half of Germany was joined with Prussia. At that time, Prussian political power was controlled by two very anti-Catholic political groups, the Prussian conservatives, who were ardently pro-Protestant, and the German liberals, who were against any form of ecclesiastical, dogmatic, organized Christianity. Under Otto von Bismarck, these two powerful anti-Catholic forces joined together in what was called the Kulturkampf, to persecute the minority Catholics within the empire, who were treated basically as a foreign element to be assimilated or exterminated. In 1854, Bishop John Tymon of Buffalo, New York, and Nicholas Devereux, a large landholder and financier from Utica, New York, persuaded a group of friars from Italy to venture to America and establish a Catholic college and seminary in western New York. The Italian friars came to western New York to minister to the flood of Catholic European immigrants arriving in America in the mid-1800s. These friars founded St. Bonaventure College near Olean, New York, which today is known as St. Bonaventure University. The same St. Bonaventure University who has lost 22 of their last 24 men's basketball games against my University of Dayton Flyers, but I digress. 20 years later, a group of German friars left the persecution of the Kulturkampf and settled in Patterson, New Jersey. In 1901, these German friars joined with the Italian friars to become the Holy Name Province, which today is the largest of the seven provinces of the Order of Friars Minor in the United States. In 1867, Joseph Heinrichs was born in Ostrich, Germany, and as a Catholic, spent his youth living under the persecution of the culture comp. Feeling a call to join the Order of Friars Minor, in 1886, Joseph came to America to join the Franciscans who had left Germany a decade earlier and settled in Patterson, New Jersey. He was received into their novitiate in 1886, professed his temporary vows in 1887, and took the religious name Brother Leo. He made a solemn profession in 1890 and in 1891 was ordained to the priesthood. Over the next 16 years, Father Leo Heinrichs, OFM, served as an assistant novice master at the friary and then as a pastor at a few parishes in New York and New Jersey before being appointed as pastor of St. Elizabeth's Parish in Denver, Colorado in 1907. As a quick aside, Father Leo received permission to leave for Germany early in 1908 to visit his family who had not seen in over 20 years, but he delayed the trip until after June 7th as he was preparing a class of children for receiving the sacrament of their first Holy Communion and wanted to see it through before leaving to visit Germany. So, in February 23rd of 1908, Father Leo Heinrichs was still in America and was scheduled to offer the 8 a.m. Sunday Mass at St. Elizabeth's, but he had a meeting which conflicted with this time, so he requested to switch with his vicar, Father Wollstone Workman, who normally offered the earlier 6 a.m. Mass. 
I'm sure you're aware, but as a reminder, in 1908, the Mass celebrated by Father Leo would have been the Latin Mass, also known as the Tridentine Mass, or the Mass of the Ages, or the Extraordinary Form. And of course, you can hear all about the history of the Mass in our Catholic History Trek episode on the Mass. Anyway, at the Latin Mass, the communicant kneels at a communion rail where they receive the Holy Eucharist from the priests. As Father Leo was distributing the Eucharist at the 6 a.m. Mass, when he attempted to place the host on the tongue of a man who had approached the communion rail, the man pulled out a revolver and shot Father Leo through the heart. The man was a Sicilian anarchist named Giuseppe Alia, who was making his first stop of the morning on an attempted rampage to kill as many priests as possible that day. The front page of the February 27, 1908 edition of the Denver Catholic Register captured Father Leo's final moments. Father Leo reeled and sank to the floor of the sanctuary, striving with the instinct of the priest to collect the consecrated particles which had been scattered from the chalice. Father Wollston, being called, was just in time to administer the last sacraments when he expired, his last act being to point mutely to the fallen contents of the ciborium. When he was fatally shot, Father Leo was standing in front of the altar of Our Lady, which is typically placed on the left side, or gospel side, of most traditionally built Catholic churches. The location of the assassination was fitting, as a week before he died, he had preached to the young lady's sodality that if he had his choice of a place where he would die, he would choose to die at the feet of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When he said this, he probably did not know his words would prophetically come true only a week later. Alia was captured attempting to flee the church, Apparently, he was arrested by an off-duty police officer after being slowed up by a conductor for the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. The Denver and Rio Grande Railroad, for those who are interested, which is probably just me, was incorporated in 1870 and later became the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, which mostly served Colorado and Utah. It was later merged with Southern Pacific and then assimilated by Union Pacific in the mid-1990s. The Railroad was also the subject of a 1952 movie by Technicolor and Paramount titled Denver and Rio Grande, which is a fictional account of the Railroad's founding. Showing no remorse for killing the priest, the assassin admitted that he was an anarchist and had planned to kill several other priests that day. From a front page article in the San Francisco Call of February 24, 1908, Aaliyah was quoted as saying, I am an anarchist and proud of it. I shot him, and my only regret is that I could not have shot the whole bunch of priests in that church. He was quickly rushed away by police to prevent mob justice from lynching him, although, after he was tried, he was sentenced to death by hanging. It said his last words were, death to the priests. If you're curious as to the type of revolver that Aaliyah used to kill Father Heinrichs, again, probably just me, there's little information to be found on the firearm. Although, if I were to speculate, and I will, given that the assassin was from Italy and the murder took place in the early 20th century, I would guess the revolver was likely similar to the Italian Bodio Model 1889 revolver mentioned in our Catholic History Trek episode on St. Gabriel Pacenti. In the 1920s, the Franciscans initiated the calls for Father Leo Heinrich's canonization, which was officially opened in the 1930s. He's currently recognized as a servant of God, which is the first step on the road to formal canonization. Although, if you search that bastion of reliable and unbiased information, called Wikipedia, you'll notice that he is not on their list of about 100 servants of God. So, take that for what it's worth. Conversely, one thing that is reliable is that Kevin and I end each episode of Catholic History Trek with a prayer in the Church's historic language of Latin. As Father Leo Heinrichs was murdered celebrating the Mass, I thought it appropriate to end in a prayer from the Latin Mass. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Thank you for listening to Catholic History Trek. You can reach us at catholichistorytrek at gmail.com.